Ender Lilies. It's not quite Dark Souls, it's not quite Hollow Knight, but it'll do. It begins in a fantasy land. All was well until the rain. Rain can really ruin your day, or in this case, your kingdom, and this was a drizzle like no other. It was one of those non-specific evil force type of deals. Some games call it the corruption, or the malaise, or whatever. In Ender Lilies, it's the blight. A blighted rain has made everything all wet and drippy, and also turned everyone into zombies, which is bad news for the innocent little child priestess you play as. You can't fight, you can't talk. About all you can do by yourself is dodge roll, which here is more of a dodge belly flop, but it accomplishes the same thing. Luckily, you've got a pal, the Black Knight, uh, sorry, the Umbral Knight, the Phantom Warrior who provides you moral support, guidance, and also slices up anyone who crosses your path. Together, you'll venture forth to explore the land, purify the corrupted, and maybe even figure out what caused the blighty business to begin with. Ender Lily's Quiet Girl in the Night isn't mind-blowingly original. If you played Hollow Knight or any of the other Dark Souls-inspired side-scrollers out there, you've got a solid idea of what you're in for. Explore stuff, fight stuff, collect stuff, occasionally read some lore, brave the world ahead of you, forge ahead into the darkness of the unknown, just to get bodied by an enemy you've never seen before right before you find a safe point. Find a bunch of new moves, but still fight 80% of enemies by just dodge rolling behind them and shanking them in the backside. Collect all the notes and lore books and tell yourself you'll do a deep dive and read them all at some point in your playthrough and then never ever actually do that. And, as always, prepare yourself mentally for that one boss that will make you break a controller with how hard it is, because there is always that one. Always. A few things are different, though. You can purify people to collect their spirits, and then bind them to your will to have them fight for you by giving you new attacks. You can find spare blight scattered around the world, like loose change, and feed it to your ability spirits to power them up, in a process the mechanics of which are never clearly spelled out. Don't skip out on this, by the way. Don't be like me. I tried to be a purist and stick largely to sword and dodge, but using the right moves makes a world of difference. My personal favorite, the one I would give the blue ribbon to, is the arrow volley, because flying enemies in this game are a royal pain as you yourself cannot fly. Most of the moves are useful in the right circumstances unless you forget to upgrade them for half the game. Again, don't be like me, I can't stress that enough. Your spirits will even show up to keep you company at save points, hovering around you like loyal pets. It's kind of sweet until you remember that they're bound to your will and can't actually leave, which really kills the vibe, but try not to think about that too much. Really the most disappointing ability was parrying, which is weird, right? You think games like this would have have that down to a science at this point. It's slow, it's awkward to use, the risk isn't worth the reward, and whatever developer decided to have it bound to the same button as the dodge roll ought to be kneecapped. Even in the best case, it's still generally inferior to dodging, and by the time the credits rolled, I think parrying probably got me killed more times than it actually saved me. It just feels tacked on, like it's here because it has to be. Oh well. Ender Lilies isn't too long. I got to ending A in about 10 hours, but you definitely want to keep playing if you want to collect more lore, do some exploring, or I don't know, play the entire second half of the game? Good lord, I thought there were just a few collectibles left to get after the first ending, not 10 more hours of game to play. I was this close to putting the game down after the credits rolled. If I hadn't picked it up again just to see what happens, I legitimately would have missed half the game. That's nuts. And that second half is well worth it. No part of Ender Lilies is bad, but I'd say that the game actually does gradually get better the farther along you go. You collect more abilities, the story gets more fleshed out, out, and it feels like the developers put more work into the later parts than the early stuff. There's cool bosses to beat, there's some amazing new areas, and also a sewer, and of course the proper good ending, which any gamer worth their salt owes it to themselves to strive for. As I said early on, Ender Lilies doesn't do too much that's revolutionary, but it still executes the formula solidly. It's not reinventing the wheel, but it follows the recipe of Souls-like platformers so well that it still manages to be extraordinary. All in all, pretty darn good. I'd rate it as being about 90% as good as Hollow Knight, which means it's probably the best Souls-like side-scroller we're gonna get, at least until Silksong comes out, if it ever does. So yeah, you might want to take a look at it. Anyway, I'm all done playing. I'm off to the next game. Take it easy.